The block we have today is called the star block. It's going to be block one of two. Tomorrow when I release the next video, it will be the lattice block and it, it will be part of a two block quilt. You don't have to use this in a two block quilt, but this is what I'm going to talk about today. Here's the picture of the block and here is the picture of the diagram. And I'm going to show you how you can alternate these two blocks and make this quilt. I don't know if you can see it too well in this picture, but this quilt gives the illusion of curves and there's not really any curves. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see the curves kind of starting to form around here. Before we start the block, I want to address a question I get a lot on the comments, and that is, do you use starch? And the answer is yes, I use starch. I use the Stay Flow, it's concentrated. You buy it at the grocery store or the discount store, anywhere where they sell laundry detergent, usually will have some of this. And right on the bottle it says, this bottle is equal to seven aerosol cans. I think I paid, it's under $4, it's maybe $3.85 or something. This is concentrated, so you have to shake it up every time you use it. It's concentrated, and I fill the bottle half with water and the other half with this concentrated starch. Shake it up. Every time you use it, you need to shake it up. The second thing people talk about is, well, the starch flakes. Yes, it does flake, and it will flake, but if you spray your fabric and then let it dry a little bit, because have you ever sprayed your fabric and then you put the iron on it and you hear that sizzle? I've, I'm told you don't want that sizzle. I, I guess that sizzle just means whatever you sprayed on here is turning into steam. Try to let it dry and soak through the fabric for a little bit and then press it. That will eliminate some of the flaking. And if it does flake, it just, it just brushes off, so it's really not a problem. I starch before I cut the fabric, and I starch when the block is finished. And if there's some time in between that I need to starch, I'll, I'll use a little more starch, but mostly before I cut the fabric and when the block is finished. You'll especially want to starch if you're cutting and sewing triangles. A, a half square triangle, you'll have two sides the, this is gonna, the lengthwise or crosswise grains go this way. And this is a bias grain, which means it stretches. So if you starch this before you cut it, you'll get a, nice, a nicer cut, and then it will be easier to stitch this because it won't want to stretch as much with the starch. It's a little bit stiffer, so it's easier to press. And quarter square triangles have two bias edges, so you're dealing with two. Another triangle that should be starched before cutting is this the triangle we're going to use today, the triangle in square, because th this is on the bias here, not only on the triangle, but also on this half rectangle. And so you have half rectangles, you have these. A lot of triangles have the bias grain on the, or at least one or two sides. Another thing, and this is my pet peeve, I'm getting on my soapbox now, a lot of times you'll see demonstrations where you have two pieces of fabric, you put them right sides together, and you sew around the edges. And what you're doing, you're sewing along the lengthwise or crosswise grain. And these are the most stable grains. They don't stretch very much. And then you take your ruler and you cut in half this way and you cut in half this way. And that means when you open them up, these cuts here are along the outer edges. So now you have outer edges that stretch. And here is the bias. It just stretches all out of shape. If you're going to do something like that, then you need to starch the heck out of this thing, make it as stiff as a board, because when you try to sew these edges together, like you sew block to block together once you've done them, they're just gonna stretch like crazy everywhere you go. Now I know this is an easy way to use pre-cuts. I just do not like this technique. Anyway, off my soapbox now. That's just my thing. I, I always starch, especially when I'm using any kind of triangles. Now let's look at this block. There are three different units in this block. We have the four patches in the corners, and we have the triangle and square on the four sides. Then we have a square and a square in the center. Something about this triangle and square, it allows you to 
create the illusion of the curves without stitching a curve. A lot of times when you see these quilts that have, they look like curves, but they're really not, they're made up of two different blocks. This is the star block we're doing today, and tomorrow we're going to do the lattice block. Most of the time when you have these circles, this triangle and square unit is part of the picture. It's going to be in one or both of the blocks you use to create this curved illusion. I have three other videos with similar quilts. What they all have in common is they, are, they consist of two different blocks, and at least one of the blocks has this unit, this triangle in square unit. And I'm going to show you pictures coming up of the three quilts that I've made videos for, and there are free patterns for all of them, that have this illusion, this illusion of curves. So if you're ever trying to design a quilt and you want to have the illusion of these curves, you'll probably need to include the triangle and square unit, and sometimes if you include a half square triangle, it gives an even bigger curve. So take a look at the pictures that are just coming up, and then I'll have links to those videos in the description. Now finally we get to the block. I'll show you the patches. Here are the patches, and patch A is a is cut two and a half inches by two and a half inches for a two inch finished square. But in this one I've also given you the strip piecing alternative, and that's what we're going to do in the demo today. Here is the Accu quilt, it's the eight inch cube shape two, two inch finished square. Now for the tri rec. I'm going to demonstrate using the Tri-Rex ruler. This is the only ruler that I've used. I know there are many other brands out there. They work equally well, so use the one you're comfortable with. I tried to find ways to rotary cut these, but I can never get them accurate. And I just like this Tri-Rex ruler set. It comes with, you can hardly see it. This is the Tri tool that you cut out the triangle. And then the Rex tool, the Rex tool where you cut out the rectangle. This set I discovered, you know, years ago, and it's always been good and always get very good results. So that is what I'm going to demo in these cases. We're going to be doing more blocks in the future that use this triangle and square. If you are interested in that, you need to find some way that you're comfortable stitching these and then stick with that. Using the tri ruler, we're going to cut four patches of the B, which is the triangle patch, and we're going to use cut four patches each of C and CR. There's C patch and C reversed. When you cut these, you'll put the fabrics right sides or wrong sides together, and we're going to piece four of the tri rec units. Now for the square and square, you're going to have four half square triangles that go around the corner, and those finish at two inches. So you'll cut two and seven eighth inches by two and seven eighth, cut it in half once diagonally, and you'll get two patches. Here is your AccuQuilt eight inch cubes shape five will work. And for the square on point, or square in square, you cut three and three eighth inches inches by three and three eighth inches and you just need one patch for the center and here I tell you how to sew the patch together. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we put the block together. Here are the fabrics I've chosen. For the four patch I have the background and I have the medium color. We're going to strip piece those. For the tri rec unit I have the background for the triangle and the dark blue for the rectangle units. For the square and square, I have the background and the light blue fabric. The four patches, let's do the four patches now. We're going to sew these together. You have one of each fabric. Sew these together lengthwise and press. Here's part of it. And after you press, lay it on your mat and make sure that you have a nice straight line. Don't have any curves in it like this. 
and I press and use my starch. Then we cut the strip into eight two and a half inch segments. Then we'll take two of these segments, flip them over like this, and stitch this way. Then we'll have our four patch unit, and we'll need four of those. For the tri rec units, you use the background for our triangle, and these are cut four and a half inches wide, and I tell you how much length you need. We're going to place the four and a half inch mark of the ruler on here and cut. Then flip the ruler over and then make your other cut. And we'll need four of these triangles. For the rectangle unit, you'll take your two pieces and I'm going to put wrong sides together. You can put right sides together if you want. This will give you the opposite pieces that you need. You take your rectangle tool and line up the four and a half inch mark. The rectangle part has a little notch you're going to cut off right here. And that's really important. I know you can't really see it that well. But we're going to cut this little notch off. I'm just going to do it now. It seems so tiny and insignificant, but it really helps you when you're placing your pieces. Now we cut this. Flip the ruler over. And cut your second set. So you're cutting two at a time. Cut off your little tip. And what you have here, if I open this up, I have two pieces that are opposite sides. And actually they, this is the right side here. So this goes like this and your triangle goes here in the middle. And you'll cut four sets of these. And what you're going to do with this, you're going to lay this on one side first and if you can see, let's lay this, get this nice and even and I'm just scooching it over. This little thick piece you cut off has to line up with this edge and then the, this edge has to line up all the way down. Start your stitching here. You should be right about here when you start and do your quarter inch all the way down. When, after you stitch one side, press your seams open and then stitch your other side the same way. Now for the square and square, we're going to take two of our triangles and if you're not using if you're using the Accu quilt, it'll have these little corners cut off. We're just going to center this triangle here, line up this top edge, and it should be roughly at this point where it makes a V that that's your quarter of an inch and you stitch a quarter of an inch all the way across. Then stitch this one the same way. So it will be like this. Stitch these two sides and press them, and then come back and stitch the other two sides and press those. Now we'll do all the stitching and come back and put the block together. I want to show you a couple of things about the square and square and the tri rec units as you're piecing them. Once you've pieced these opposite sides together, you'll have these little nubs sticking out. I usually cut those off before I stitch the other one, the other part. Sometimes you will have a little bit of a, see how this sticks up here a little bit? I, I don't worry about that. I just leave it like that and cut these off. Then when you put the other side on, you want to place this on here and center it. If you turn it over like this, it's easier to see the little points that come out as you're trying to place it in the center. Of course you could find the center of both of these and match those. But these are what you're, what you're concerned about. And if you'll see how this makes a little V here, a 90 degree angle right here. This is where you want your, to start your stitching. 
So from here to here should be about a quarter of an inch. Then you stitch your quarter of an inch across and then here you meet this other 90 degree or this V angle right in the middle. And then when you press this, you'll have, it will come out straight across here and across here once you press it. And then once you press it open, you'll cut off these little nubs. For the Tri-Rec unit, this unit here was done with the AccuQuilt. And when you end up with it, you have almost this curved corner at the top. These little pieces are cut off. That's normal. Don't worry about that. Leave it. And then this bottom part is pretty straight. You're going to have something similar with the, the Tri-Rec unit. I'm going to flip this over. When you sew the first one on, and that's the one down here, and I've got the, the top one flipped over, you'll see that this little nub sticks out here. This little nub is from the first piece we sewed on and then it was pressed. So that little nub is sticking up. Leave that on there for now because you're going to take your next piece and match that little nub with the corner here. So just put them on exactly the same and then here's your V again. This is different angle but where the two pieces meet that's where you want to start. This is your quarter of an inch here. And you sew down a quarter of an inch to get here. And you want to come off at this little angle here. It goes this way, then it angles up. Here's that little piece you cut off before. So you want to get right there where those two meet. Then when you press them open, then you cut your nub off. So here you have your point, and this is about a quarter of an inch. And we'll cut this off. And then let's look at the top here. We have these little wings sticking up here and we're going to cut those off. Okay, And you see you have your same little corners like your curved corners here at the, the top. That's perfectly normal too. And then down here you have your straight. Once you stitch the, this piece, this unit, to another one, just line up your quarter of an inch here and then start wherever it is, a quarter of an inch from here to here. Just go straight down a quarter of an inch and don't worry about this curve edge at the top. We have our square and a square. We have our four triangle and squares and we have our four half square triangles. Now we're going to put them together this goes in the center. The triangles are all pointing to the center. Put those on. Now the four patches, you want those to be going out to the corner. The accent fabric goes out to the corner. That's how you get your design. Now I will stitch our rows, then we'll stitch the rows together and the block is finished. finished block, the star block. Tomorrow, or the next video, we'll have the lattice block. It will also have instructions for making this quilt at 60 by 84 finished. Thank you for watching.